What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we're going to talk about dating apps vulnerabilities. I'm sure you have tried dating apps before. Of course, I tried it as well. Today we're going to see how dating apps are vulnerable to injection attacks and cyber attacks in general, like any other applications. In the past, dating apps have been exposed to cyber attacks. I'm sure you have all heard the attack that hit Bumble, Tinder, and many other dating apps. Today we're going to take a practical demo scenario to see how an attacker could exploit an underlying vulnerability in the application server, basically the dating app server. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. All right, so this is the login page and here you can see the sign up button. I'm gonna click here and sign up. So let me put the username for me, a password, probably an easy password. Email could be my name at test.com. And my age, well, probably we're in a dating app, so we should not lie about your age. But anyway, like most of uh, people do, but right, let's do let's do the right thing. So let's do it. 3.34, short bio, and here to find the one. The gender, going to be male. And here we're looking for female. Going to click on register. Username already exists. Okay, this time let's choose a profile picture. Okay, so I see pictures for men. Well, I didn't choose to see men here. Anyway, so <coughs> uh, let me go to matches, see if I have any matches. Okay, that's uh, actually expected because we haven't swiped in the uh, platform. I'm gonna X, Renata, I'm gonna click on love. Nope. Nope. Let's go to matches and we have one match. Okay, let's have a look at the match. Hello there, so glad we match. Me too. How? Uh, okay, let's see how are you doing? Oh wow, it's so lovely to meet someone who shares similar interests. I'm Renata, nice to meet you. So what brings you here? Are you looking for some advice or just wanting to chat? Either way, I'm all ears. By the way, have you checked out my latest YouTube video? I just posted a new maker tutorial and I think you might really enjoy it. Well, that's too much for a message uh, from someone uh, who actually matches with you for the first time. And actually, you know, girls do not send, they're not, to they're not that talkative on dating apps. So we're going to say, um, well, let's see here. Looks like I cannot type a message. Well, that's, that needs a long response. So here's the thing, what we're going to do, we're going to try to exploit this dating app by uh, using the messaging functionality. Usually we would actually exploit the app, maybe maybe the any, any website by looking at the URL and finding a loophole. Now basically here there is a URL parameter named RID, right? And the value equals to six. We could try uh, to use several values, maybe a sequence of numbers from one to 100 and the where the parameter here or ID will be equal to 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, till 100. So basically, then we're going to need to monitor the response for every value we assign to the parameter ID. We could do that using FFUF. Um, before we do so, let's try to play with the messaging functionality here. Okay, so as you can see, our, you know, our match here is very talkative and enthusiastic. We're just going to uh, give her something to stop talking. <laughs> so maybe we can try to use some HTML code, like P, okay. Now the idea here, I want to see if the underlying app executes the given code. The messenger has parsed the HTML code and rendered it. As you can see, we have the output, okay. Now maybe we can try something different, like an XSS payload. So. Let's see what are the available payloads. Let's try uh, something that is, we can try a cookie stealer. Before doing that, let's try an alert. So we send the script here and we execute. You see the browser now responded with hello, meaning you have a case of reflected and stored across site scripting. Now why reflected and stored? Because first the browser has reflected the uh, output of the script back to the client, which is us, hello here and stored because when we sent the first uh, HTML code to the messenger, 
it executed the code and as you can see we have the output so we have both stored and reflected so the idea here is we want to see if the application is vulnerable to any type of injection attacks the closest example to me here is the cross-site scripting so if you try to send cross-site scripting here cross-site scripting payloads or xss payloads to the messenger app and we see how the app reacts one way to do that is to use an xss uh, cookie stealer okay so here we have several examples and you can find some of these examples from payload all the things um, this one could work but it uses base 64 so we're going to leave this here for now and this one uses window location let's have a look at the other ones okay this one looks the one that uses document location looks solid so we're gonna have a look at this and before doing so we're gonna have to go back and um, start a python web server so starting a python web server will enable us to receive all the requests that will hit the uh, uh, web, web server we have just started so we want to send the payload the if the application is burnable it's going to respond parse the payload and send the response back to uh, the web server i have started accompanying with the cookie so my ip address here is this sorry the set and here we have slash xss slash c document dot cookie all right let's have a look And indeed, we have a cookie that has been sent back to us. But this is probably the cookie of my username. It's not the cookie of the user I am talking to. The idea here is that I want to, let's, let's go back. This is the same cookie, right? It's here, yeah. So the idea here, I want to steal the cookie of this user, right? I want to exploit the fact that the app is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. This means I can steal the cookies of other users. Let me right click inspect and have a look at the cookie stored in my browser go to application cookies and that's the cookie you see the value of this cookie is equal to or it's the same value of the cookie i have received it is not the cookie of the username so probably here we have to do something else if we try another payload maybe maybe this one this one uses the image tag Still, we have no hits on my web server. Let's go back. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Of course, this is the cookie that I have. This is the cookie of my user. Go back and we wait it a bit. Okay, I received another cookie here, but it's the same cookie I received before. It's the cookie of my username. Still, I did not get the cookie of this user. Now, this is a keylogger. Let's give it a try. It's going to record every keystroke on the page. All right, let's have a look. Now, all the keystrokes typed on the page should be uh, returned back to my web server here. Let's type something, test. okay so we are seeing something that is weird okay let's see here bad request version so that's what's going on now inside the page so because we have actually sent a keylogger now we can see everything that's being returned and sent to the page now let's do another one there's two okay but still we did not get the cookie of the user that's a nice way to you know try it out all right now probably we're gonna have to use um, a dedicated online server that can actually receive these requests made uh, through this app so there is an application named um, the application name here is request bin this allows you to collect web requests and view them in a friendly way you can create a request bin here and we have here all the needed. So if you want to use it in a HTTP request, we can use the first one. 
Now clearly here, we're going to need only to use the URL. That is the URL. I'm going to have to copy this and use it in one of the payloads we have here. So let's create a new payload. Instead of the URL of my attacker machine, I'm going to put the URL of, uh, right, this one doesn't look fine. Okay, let's use the document location as well. So here, I'm going to replace this with this. Okay, so instead of the IP of the web server I have created, I just put the IP address, uh, put the uh, URL of the request bin. Okay. Back here, send. And we have an okay response. Now, this is the cookie of the username I created. Let's go back to the app now and inspect the requests. So go back, click on the main page, and here we have um, the bin I created. Click on it. Okay, here we have the cookie, right? And this is the request. So this is the cookie of the username I created again. But we have another request here that came along, contains a cookie that is different from the first one. So now if we have a look at this cookie, copy it, go back, um, go back to the page, or maybe you can, yeah, go back to the page, right click, click on inspect, and from here we select application, and here is the cookie. You see the cookie ends with PW. I'm going to change this to the cookie I have received. And now it ends with 8 uppercase Y. To have the changes take effect, we're going to have to refresh the page. And here, take a look what happened. Now, I am exchanging the conversation. I am seeing the conversation that has been exchanged with me. So this means now I am the girl that I have been talking to. And now I can talk to myself, which means, which means I have already taken over her username. So that's an example of vulnerabilities that you may see in dating apps. And that's the uh, flag, because this is part of Hack the Box challenge, and this is the username.